Welcome to another edition of Gas Talk, Somnia Anesthesia's series of podcasts on the smart approach to outsourced anesthesia services. In this episode of Gas Talk, we're joined once again by Dr. Clifford Gewertz, an anesthesiologist who has been practicing for some 32 years in a variety of settings. He's also the medical director for Somnia's ambulatory and office-based anesthesia management services. Today, he's going to talk briefly about low and minimal flow anesthesia and specifically how that practice not only improves clinical outcomes, but also helps the environment and lowers costs at the same time. Thanks for being with us again, Dr. Gewertz. Thanks for having me back. Well, today I'm going to throw down what I'm calling a challenge for you, and that is what can clinical directors do to start saving money on materials immediately? Well, that's not really a challenge at all. There's actually a very easy way to do it. First, the clinical directors should walk around their operating rooms during cases. They should take note of the flow rates of oxygen, nitrous oxide, and air on their anesthesia machines. I'll bet Once they do, they'll find that there are a lot of clinicians on their team who are using flow rates higher than 2 liters per minute. And while I think most providers have learned the lesson of low flow anesthesia, there are still many out there who are running higher flows than necessary. Okay, so when you say running higher flows than necessary, what does that actually mean? If the directors are finding that, what should they do? Well... The clinical directors should look at their gas costs over the past year. After doing a quick calculation off the top of their heads, they can easily identify how much money could be saved if everyone on their team was using the low flow or minimal flow method. Now, when it comes to offices with local standbys or MAC cases, the use of nasal cannula oxygen can also be a source for savings. Here's how that would work. A provider would only turn on the oxygen flow when the oxygen saturation goes below 94%. In my experience, I've seen that in many places, it is turned up to 4 liters per minute and left to run that way all day long. That's a terrible waste. And not to mention, that is also a fire hazard when the procedures involve the face. As an inside joke, we refer to providers who keep it running all day long at those high levels as fire and forget providers. Oh my goodness. I hate to laugh at that. It's it's something serious. It sounds as though you have a lot of experience in this area. Is there anything else anesthesia clinicians need to know about low and minimal flow, that method? And are there any other tips you can provide? Gas analyzers need to be carefully calibrated, and the anesthesia equipment must have preventative maintenance performed on a regular basis. We're talking at least annually here. And we cannot forget the anesthesia vaporizers themselves. They need to be calibrated at the same low flow level that we will be running. The calibration on these machines is often determined at higher flow rates than at the low flow rates that we are proposing to be used. Another area is in the intensive care units and wherever else ventilators are used. We often see high flows of oxygen used inappropriately. This scenario also represents a source of savings for the hospital. From an environmental perspective, you know, it's important to remember that nitrous oxide is a greenhouse gas and that the potent inhalation agents are ozone depleting agents. These are being directly vented into the atmosphere. So by lowering levels, which saves on costs, you're also having a positive impact on the environment. And that's a really good thing. In the bigger picture, we can view these tasks as thinking globally, but acting locally. It's a cliche, but nevertheless, we can help make the footprint of anesthesia smaller. In the end, if all of these procedures are followed and levels correctly calibrated, I'd say it's fair to assume that offices, hospitals, and surgery centers could save up to 40% on their oxygen bills. Wow, that's a breath of fresh air for them. I, I, I guarantee you they'd like to hear that. Thanks again, Dr. Gewertz, for being with us and for sharing more tips on how to efficiently and cost-effectively manage anesthesia. Thanks for listening to this edition of Gas Talk. Check out somniainc.com forward slash gas talk for more information about outsourced anesthesia services or to listen to past episodes.